Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and we are celebrating 10 years on YouTube. As of January 4th, 2021, it has been 10 years on the platform as Mr. Creepypasta. Tonight's story is one that I I have to talk about, honestly. This is, this is very much something that helped me start creating characters, or really trying to act more on my videos than um, trying to just flat narrate. There's a lot of characters and character voices and characters I try to portray, at least in an emotional way, that I feel like stemmed from here to go on to be the characters that I play in Baraska or the characters I play in Tales from the Gas Station or many other other stories and series that you can possibly see on the channel. This was the first time that I ever tried to play a character who had gone completely crazy, who was emotionally broken. And I believe this is, I went way, way over the top in the original, uh, but I want to be able to revisit it and, and really try to hit those notes the way that I feel like they're supposed to be. And plus, I mean, it's a creepypasta monster that we all know and love. So this is Sacrifice by an unknown anonymous author. April 25th, 2011. I awoke abruptly, sweat dripping from my brow. I could feel his presence. I looked around my room. I know I'm being watched. It's not... It's not anywhere to be seen. Damn, it's the third night in a row I've been awoken like this. The fear is starting to take over my mind. Something out there is stalking me. Something wants me. But I should back up and I should tell this from the beginning, right? I'm 16 years old. I moved into this house with my family seven years ago. It's about 30 minutes outside of town, so so we're fairly isolated. My parents love living out here. They say it's peaceful, it's pretty, and, well, I hate it. Not as much during the day as during the night. I've always been scared of the dark. You know, it's my, it's my number one phobia. I hate not being able to see. And out here at night, there's no light other than the moon and the stars. No... Warm, comforting glow of street lamps. No headlights slowly moving up and down the street. Just just a hazy darkness. And it's especially dark during a new moon. And that's when I first encountered it. A thing. I had a bunch of friends over, and after dark, we all decided to play some airsoft capture the flag. So it was a new moon, which made it especially dark and creepy. No light pierced the inky blackness except for the flashlights on the barrels of our airsoft pistols, and the occasional zip of glow-in-the-dark airsoft pellets flying at their targets. We were all having a great time. <laughs> I grabbed the other team's flag, I was rushing back to my base, and I heard a sound that made my blood run cold. A scream of terror coming from about 30 feet to my right. A flash of white was running away from the sound. I changed directions, I rushed towards the noise, aiming my flashlight at the source of the sound. My friend Jacob was sitting in the dirt, holding his bleeding leg, obviously in pain. The cut was deep. Another friend, Matt, and I rushed him inside, and we sat on the edge of the bathtub and began to wash and dress the cut. We asked him what had happened. Some creature had scratched him, he said. He didn't get a good look at it, but just saw a flash of white. At first, I assumed it was just a possum or something. And that's when I saw it again. The second time, I was alone. It was the middle of the night, not a new moon, thankfully, but still eerie. I had insomnia, a rather common problem for me, and it was 2 a.m. I'd given up all hope of getting any sleep, so I went downstairs to the living room, and I popped in a DVD, and as I lay on the couch, my mind lost in the world of Inception, one of my dogs started barking. I thought nothing of it. Barking in the middle of the night is basically a routine for them. Then my other dog joined in. No big deal. But I noticed something. This bark was more menacing than usual. It was more, more of a guttural, growling bark. The bark dogs make when they're threatened. You know, I, I turned on the back porch light, and I stepped outside, creeped out. I called for them. Jake! Zoe, come here! 
than I saw what they were barking at. It looked like a like a human crouched there in the grass. It was probably about four feet tall with bare, pale skin and long, bony limbs. I studied it for about five seconds and it stared back at me. And I'll never forget its eyes. It was dark, almost like, like empty sockets. Its cold gaze washed over me as if it was... It was sizing me up, and then it slowly started to move towards me. I was almost paralyzed by fear, but I was able to get back into the house. I locked the door behind me, and I rushed to my parents' room. They were convinced I had a nightmare. But I I know the truth, right? That, that was the first time I had fully seen the creature. The creature that would bring me to the brink of insanity. I didn't see that thing again for quite some time. I... I started to think that maybe my parents were right. It was just a dream. I was really sleep deprived after all, but deep down inside, I knew, I knew I had seen something. But a few weeks ago, I was on some website my friend Derek had recommended, and I saw a picture that shocked me. It was a creature, the one that I had seen. The, the website called this creature the Rake, and that it stalks and mauls its victims. The moment I saw the article, my blood ran cold. And could I have seen this creature? The thought haunted me, refusing to leave my mind. I saw it again for the first time in months last week. I had just woken up in the middle of the night again. Immediately, I felt that something was wrong. You know, the, the house was too quiet. I felt very unsettled. I got out of bed, I walked to the window, and I raised the blinds, and... It was, it was very dark outside, but I could make something out. The creature was outside, scratching at something on the ground. Immediately, I opened the window. I yelled at the thing. It looked up at me. It caught my eyes for a moment. And then it rushed off, crawling on all fours very close to the ground. And when I went out to see what it was scratching at the next morning, I found something that still chills me to the bone. The mangled, half-eaten corpse of my dog, Zoe. My parents think it was a mountain lion, but I know the truth. The so-called... Rake. That bastard creature. It killed my dog. The last few nights have been terrifying. I've woken up in a cold sweat each night. Knowing that damn thing's watching me, I... I feel its presence. I know it wants me now, and I have no idea what to do. I'm terrified. I'm terrified beyond belief, and I'm helpless. My parents keep telling me I'm imagining things, but I'm not, damn it. I know, I know what I've seen. I know that it wants me. That's, that's why I'm writing this down at three in the morning. If anything happens to me, if anything happens, I want people to know. And I'll update as soon as something else happens. May 2nd. 2011. The last week was a whirlwind of terror. I'm constantly in fear now. I know it's always watching me around, around every corner, everywhere I go. Every night, I feel its presence, and some nights more than others. I don't know exactly what it wants from me, but I know it wants something. I saw it again, for the first time in a week today. I stayed home sick. I still feel like shit. I think it makes... It, it makes me sick. I was laying on the couch watching TV, constantly looking over my shoulders because I know he's always watching me. I have a shotgun at my side. A benefit of living in the country. Got it from the garage. It's loaded in case this thing, which I've decided to call the rake, tries to attack. I knew it would soon. I heard a noise outside and I cocked my gun. I stepped, I stepped outside to investigate. Nothing. Damn it. I tried to patrol the perimeter of the house just in case. I walked all the way around. Nothing. I stepped back inside. And that's when the smell hit me. It was the stench of death. Rotting. I held the gun out in front of me, slowly made my way up the stairs, and turned the corner to my room. It was crouched in the corner, facing away from me. It slowly tilted its head towards me. And then it spoke. It spoke in its 
high, shrill voice. I'm not sure exactly what it said to me. But I didn't hesitate to pull the trigger. But it moved at almost superhuman speed and barreled into me, knocking me down. I saw it jump off our second floor balcony into the living room floor, charged out the door. My arm was bleeding bad, so I grabbed the shirt and I pushed it to my arm to try to stop the blood. I rushed outside, the gun still in my hand. It was, it was gone. Go to hell, I screamed. I stepped back inside and I saw the blood. It wasn't my blood. It, it was its blood. I grabbed the dog it hadn't killed, Jake. I put his nose to the blood. He picked up the scent and started moving towards the woods near my house. I didn't think twice, and I followed. We rushed through the woods. And a mile away from the house, Jake started to whimper. I sent him back. See, this was, this was my job. I started to explore the area, my finger twitching on the trigger, terrified. And after about a half hour of searching, I saw something weird. A small area of ground that was different. It seemed covered up. I, I walked over and I swept away the grass and I was, I was right. There was a board under the grass. I, I pulled the board. I exposed a hole. A, a rusty ladder led down against all better judgment. Curiosity got the better of me. I slung the shotgun over my back and I lowered myself down. I was in a tunnel. It wasn't well lit, a few candles, but it was lit enough to see the blood smeared walls. The smell, the smell was awful. I could see paintings in the blood, disturbing things, stuff I never wanted to see. I, I walked through the tunnel towards the source of more light. I could see a sort of room. When I stepped in, I wanted to throw up. There were, there were animal parts all over the floors, on the walls, and there must have, there must have been, this must have been its feeding room. I turn around, retching, and, and there it stood, there it stood, right there, behind me. It reached toward me, and I blacked out. I woke up in my room about 30 minutes ago now. No cut on my arm, no no blood anywhere. I decided to write everything while it's still fresh in my mind. My parents still aren't home. It's dark outside. I'm terrified to leave my room now. I mean, maybe it didn't happen at all. Maybe I'm going insane. Paranoia is here to stay. I realized what the rake said in my room when he talked to me. It won't sacrifice. Mom and Dad, if you read this after I'm gone, then, then get the hell away. I don't know where to, but just, just leave. Leave this place. May 7th, 2011. It's over now. It's over, he's satisfied. The sacrifice was made. And I'm alone. He was... He was with me three... Three, three nights. He, he just stands next to my bed. He watches me and sometimes he'll whisper to me. He told me, he told me he wanted sacrifice. Bloody sacrifice. He said I had to do it. And I knew that he was right. They don't matter to me. I can be alone. I c My parents thought I was going crazy, and little do they know. <laughs> little do they know. So last night I told him I... I told him I'd do it. I'd give him a sacrifice. A good, good sacrifice so he'll be happy. I told him... I told him to come with me. I wanted to show them a pretty spot that I had found. They walked with me. They walked to the rake hall. They... I opened it up. I pulled out a gun. I... I told them to get into it. They asked what I was doing. I... I told them that he wanted to see them. 
and they went in the hole and we, we walked through the tunnel and she was, she was crying. And then Mr. Rake came out of his hiding place and he looked at me and he had his black eyes and he smiled and then he... And then they... He killed them. He killed them. They screamed a little bit. I didn't care. He was happy now. He pointed at the hole and I knew it was time to leave. I knew it was time to leave and they... I'm back home now and I'm all alone. In my dark room, I'm not scared of the dark anymore. I, I like the dark. It reminds me of my friend the rake. I'm okay. I'm... I'm okay. I'm okay. Damn it, damn it, I'm not okay. I just led my parents to their deaths. I'm crazy. I, I have the gun with me now and I'm... I'm gonna pull the trigger. I looked across my room and he's crouching there. He's smiling at me and he's crouching there and he's telling me to do it. He's still hungry. He, he, he wants one more sacrifice. One more sacrifice. And I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. I'm going... Goodbye. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to give you a big, big thank you for sticking with me through the entirety of this video or podcast episode or what have you, and for staying with me for the past 10 years. It's been a hell of a ride, and I couldn't do any of it without you. And I want to give a very special thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon, because quite honestly, you guys help me keep the lights on in my house, and I can't thank you enough for that. A very special thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Chumbinski, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kyle, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Deanna Kraus, G Weevil 3, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Dr. Stein and Mr. Happy, Miranda Jeffries, Hogunshi, Justin Johnson, Raven Hart, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Kazen, this is my real name, no shit. Jason V.B. Wilson, Infernal One, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckard, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiri the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much. Like, seriously. Thank you guys so, so much. And if you would like to be able to join them, you always can at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. I love you guys. Seriously. All of you who support on Patreon, who follow, who subscribe, those of you who listen, and those of you who lurk. Thank you for the amazing 10 years and sweet dreams.